five years ago today, Minecraft for Windows, phones, and consoles merged together to create the Bedrock Edition. Bedrock Edition had infinite worlds, multiplayer servers that didn't require an IP address, and the biggest ever introduction of cross-platform play between devices for a game in history. The claim is that by taking the best features from each version, the Bedrock Edition is better than everything that came before, but is that actually true, and can we say five years on that Minecraft really is better together? Well, today, let's find out. However, even though you might think we're disputing the Better Together part of the Better Together update name, the actual update part is a little bit misleading too. Even though everywhere they announced this five years ago, including Minecraft.net, they called this an update, it's actually kind of misleading to give it that title, because although if you were playing Minecraft Windows 10 and Minecraft on the phones, you would just get an update to your game and everything would be changed and crossplay capable, the truth is, if you were playing Minecraft Xbox, and then much later, Minecraft Switch slash PlayStation. Uh, but if you were playing on these platforms, they didn't update the game. Or rather, there was an update, but the update was just there to tell you that there was a new version of Minecraft you could download for free in big letters on your title screen. And so there was a brand new version of Minecraft that was entirely separate to the existing version launched on this day. And that means that there are two separate versions of Minecraft on the Xbox. There is Minecraft before the rewrite, which you can still play. This is the console edition made by 4J, and then there is a brand new, entirely separate version of Minecraft, which released on that same day, or if you had the disc version a few days later, or if you had a Switch or PlayStation many years later, but there was a separate version of the game that launched for all of those players, and that is how the Better Together update truly worked. Even though Minecraft Console Edition was written in C Sharp already, which isn't that dissimilar to C++, it was concluded very early on that if they were going to make a Minecraft that works the same on all platforms, it'd be much easier to take the win. Windows 10 version of Minecraft and port it over to the Xbox, which is precisely what they did. Then they added a bunch of the features from the Minecraft console edition to this Windows 10 port. This is the update portion if you were playing on Windows 10. Uh, these features included stained glass. I cannot believe stained glass didn't exist before them, but it didn't. Fireworks with the Elytra Boost, uh, the parrots, the banners, the armor stands, the jukeboxes, and music discs. Seriously, I cannot believe just how many features were missing from Bedrock before this update, but they added a ton of them into there, allowing Minecraft Windows 10 and Pock Edition players to get a whole bunch of new features, and allowing Minecraft Xbox players to play this brand new version of Minecraft uh, while still feeling like they had access to all of their stuff, because your worlds would be able to transfer over to this new version of Minecraft, to Bedrock Minecraft, uh, by using a simple world conversion tool which they made themselves as a part of Bedrock. And this meant that every single part of your world would transfer, with the weird exception being the Furnace Minecart. The Furnace Minecart was discontinued as of this update, and that means that all of your Furnace Minecarts, they're gone. It's so sad. Rest in peace, Furnace Minecart. And so yeah, that is casualty number one, the fact that your world wouldn't truly transfer over, you'd lose your furnace minecart. But it was worth it, because now you'd be able to cross-play with anyone on an Android, an iPhone, a PC, and you'd be able to do so in bigger multiplayer settings than ever before, because instead of 8 players being the cap for a multiplayer world, it could be 10 or even 30 players, depending on how you configured that. Also, at the same time, infinite worlds came in, and servers which allowed you to play casually with not just 30, but thousands of separate friends if you really wanted to. Let's be honest, you don't have thousands of friends. We're Minecraft players here. I'm pretty introverted. I don't even like to play with another couple of people in the world. That's too many in my opinion. But yeah, sure, if you want to play with 8,000 other people, there are servers that would allow you to do that. And everything seemed really peachy at the time until everything started to actually unravel about how it came to be. Because although it was great if you were someone who had friends on the Windows platform that you could now play with for the first time, if you were just trying to play Minecraft, you'd run into all sorts of issues. On the low end, those issues just meant that every time you went to the dashboard on your Xbox, uh, the game would crash irreparably and you'd have to restart it again. Kind of annoying. On the mid end, you have issues that could cause your frame rates to dip seriously. We have the fact that controls were not optimized at all, uh, despite the fact that there had been a Minecraft console edition, which had worked really well on controller for years at that point. They decided instead of taking those control schemes and putting them into this new Minecraft, they'd instead take the control scheme that came from the phone version, where you could 
Bluetooth connector controller, and they figured that was basically the same thing. It was not basically the same thing in the slightest, and it controlled terribly for placing lots of blocks in a row, or flying, or really just about everything felt very strange to anyone who'd been playing Minecraft console, because this update was actually replacing their version of the game with an Android game, which to many people was a little upsetting, because a lot of the really cool features of this Android slash Windows 10 version of the game required you to use the chat, that is, text chat to say, you know, you type things in and you can say things that way, and this is really easy when you're on a keyboard and a mouse, and it's somewhat easy on a phone because you can touch the keyboard in front of you, but when you're on an Xbox, actually using a keyboard is very hard because 99% of players just have a controller, and all these sorts of things that weren't fought out were the mid end of the issues, but then there's the high end of the issues, which is the fact that it seems as though connecting to multiplayer games was near impossible for lots of people who previously could connect in the very same Minecraft that was just running on an Xbox, but a different version, it wouldn't work. The game would crash frequently, and in extreme cases, worlds would be corrupted as a result. One of my long-term creative worlds where I was building a city slowly for background gameplay uh, is lost to time because all of that time that I put into it was lost via some weird cloud saving. I don't even understand how it works. I'm sure at the time the people developing Minecraft Bedrock for Console also didn't understand either because if we're being entirely honest, looking back, it was so clear that although the Better Together update launched in September of 2017 and they had a lot of publicity around this event, including that epic trailer uh, you saw earlier, I mean, look at the, the work you have to put in just to build this thing, let alone uh, word the announcement and make everything actually happen behind the scenes. It was a huge monumental effort which clearly had worked everywhere else, but when it came to actually rolling out new platforms, it was clearly just a huge beta test. And so the sign at the time was that they were not ready. The sign at the time was that clearly it was going to take a lot longer before it was any way functional, and that is where five years later comes in, because after five years of updates to this game, after five years of having the PlayStation and the Nintendo, uh, you know, consumers come over to the fold as well, and after five years of really trying to integrate it all into one game, what is the Bedrock Edition like now? Is it truly better together now that we've had five years of effectively open beta testing? Was this a good decision with the, that hindsight? And that is the interesting question, because over that five years, we've seen all manner of blunders and bugs and funny announcements and marketplace over monetization, but we've also seen things that seemed impossible if you described them five years ago. Stuff like now, updates release simultaneously on Bedrock and Java. Even when they develop features, they make sure they work on both platforms before they publicly release them. That's one of the reasons the Warden was taking so long, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of things in Caves and Cliffs were so hard, is because they were redesigning generation entirely for two platforms to the point where now all the same seeds will work on Minecraft Bedrock and Java. If you see a seed in a Java video, although the structures will be differently placed, you can play that on any Minecraft platform as long as it's up to date, and you will see the exact same world. This is huge for the large number of players who watch on YouTube, or who see things on the Minecraft forums, or Reddit, and think to themselves, I want to try that too. Now they 100% can. This is a truly incredible transformation of the Minecraft experience from being segmented on every individual platform, to their truly just being one Minecraft with two slightly different flavors, and that is truly incredible. The fact that you can get betas and previews and all of, you know, snapshots effectively on all of these platforms where are, there are these really long cert processes and where it was deemed to be impossible is incredible. If you want to see the latest features coming in 1.20, you'll be able to do so in both the Java snapshot launches, but also in the Bedrock betas. That is a next level advancement. Truly, Minecraft is one big community just between two versions, and that never could have happened if it weren't for the better together. Again, right now you can say, okay, there is this thing, and it's slightly different between Bedrock and Java, and imagine how much harder it would be to explain something like Salmon. So the best uh, exclusive feature that is available for Bedrock is the fact that instead of Salmon being puny like this, they are giant like this. They also come in tiny sizes, uh, but there's three sizes of Salmon on the Bedrock version, but imagine if every individual game we now call a part of the Bedrock system had its own size of Salmon. That would get confusing really quickly quickly, no one would understand what's going on on the phone version, to the console version, to the PC version, to the other PC version for some reason. Things would get very confusing, and I think although uh, the ultimate goal would be, at one point, having both of these versions combined and everything making perfect sense between them, the fact that we're anywhere close to that happening is truly something that could not have happened without Bedrock. The switch to Bedrock was, in effect, good in a way that is very hard to argue. However, 
Uh, I don't think we can argue that it's been 100% smooth sailing the entire way here. I mean, ignoring the fact that many people had to go through years of the aforementioned issues, some people still have issues that last to this day, I think it should be mentioned. I mean, I just got into, I, I just bought an Xbox Series X, the newest generation console of Minecraft, and you would expect like, well, you know, after having made Minecraft Bedrock for so many consoles now, they'd be pretty good at this. No, Minecraft still is filled with errors to this day uh, that have not been fixed after five years of being visible. Here is a big example. If you go, uh, if you're playing Minecraft and then you exit to the menu screen, and then you go back into Minecraft, so you just go to the dashboard as the console itself encourages you to do all the time. Um, doing this will not will stop you from being able to play realms, and you have to close and exit the game and start it again. It's just it's such a simple thing to fix. Why do we still have this issue? Why is it that they try to make a quick command system uh, for Bedrock so that players on consoles could easily just uh, you know use their D-pad to move around and work out various commands? You can set the time of the day there. You can do a few things like that. Why have they not expanded on this system? System since. Seriously, Minecraft Console Edition, when it was around, was adding new host privileges, the rough equivalent of commands. Uh, they were adding new versions of that every single year, but it's been five years, and as best I can tell, there are new commands, but only if you type them out fully. There is nothing new that you can do solely with your controller, to the level where I genuinely do just have to plug in a keyboard if I intend to do anything in that realm. There's a whole aspect of the game which is basically unavailable to console players. Well, I lie, there's multiple aspects of the game that aren't available to console players, uh, being able to access servers outside of the ones in the game, obviously that isn't, that, that's a, a breach of the Microsoft policies for games on console apparently, so even though Microsoft owns Minecraft and Microsoft owns the Xbox, Microsoft tells Microsoft that they have to make a worse version of the Microsoft game uh, that runs on the Microsoft console, and uh, so as a result, yeah, you cannot go on servers, but the worst one of all is the fact that they actually got it working for a while, the ability to upload your own custom skins and download uh, custom custom worlds from outside of the marketplace. They had this working in some betas temporarily, um, and they absolutely just ignored it. Instead of putting work and time and effort in, which they could have done over the last five years, they just said, nah, we don't want you to have your own custom skins. Why would they want you to have your own custom skins when you can buy them instead? I always, I come across as cynical, and I, I think I am quite a cynical individual, but when you look at the marketplace and you see that every single time there is a feature they could add that conflicts somewhat with their interest in the marketplace, they don't bother getting round to it. I think this is best exemplified by going back to the list of features from the Better Together update. So new features, stained glass, fireworks, etc, etc, coarse dirt, and new world options. There's, there's a lot of really valuable things for the average player, but you'll notice that it doesn't include the ability to make custom super flat worlds. You'll notice it doesn't include the ability uh, you know, to play mini games like was built into the game before this point. Um, and the logic there is like, yeah, these things can come later to the game. I mean, it is a little bit suspicious that they both conflict with the marketplace, but, you know, I'm sure they just thought to themselves, well, they can temporarily use the marketplace, and then we can add these features later. Five years on, we still do not have custom super flat. Although, uh, you know, like the, the current trend on YouTube, I've seen multiple videos of people surviving on a super flat world. I, as best I can tell, the bonus chest only version is something that I started. Wow, look at me uh, being proud of myself. But I'm just mentioning that to you to say that like people love the flat option, which is the only other world type available. If you added any other world type to Minecraft, we know it would be hugely popular, and yet they do not do so. And that is kind of disappointing in my opinion. You can still start a super flat world by going back to the old console edition and then converting the world over, but it doesn't fully work in all of the ways, and it just makes me feel and sound like a cynical old man when it's like, well, Minecraft does a really good job of adding features right up until it interferes with their profit line. And, you know, that's fine going forwards, I guess. I understand that I don't want to do, I don't want to put work into things that actively lose me money. I do understand on that level, but I also think that at the time, Minecraft Console Edition, you know, Minecraft Bedrock was meant to take all the features from Minecraft Console Edition, and uh, by taking some of them and saying, we'll do that later, and then later saying, oh no, we decided not to do it because it wouldn't make us money, that is a bait and switch. That is the point where people feel misled, saying that you will do something, and then not doing something because you only said you'd do it to, uh, before you realized you would lose money, that is not a good tactic in my opinion. And five years onward, there is basically no excuse. I, I we, we keep seeing little murmurings, little signs, they might do something with custom super flats. I hope that the current trend of people playing these flat worlds is something that can show Minecraft that people love any custom world option you throw at them, 
But, I mean, do you want to hold your breath on that? Also, five years on, we can say it's not in there definitively, just like with Hardcore, although that is also something we see murmurings of here and there. There are important features to make Minecraft better, important features which, you know, would truly make the two games equal, uh, that are a reminder that although we have all these amazing points of parity between Bedrock and Java, although uh, that then allows you to therefore effectively have a better game, because Java can only play with Java players, whereas Bedrock can play with the over 100 million other Bedrock players, in theory, it could be the better version of the game but as best I can tell to kind of summarize I think that better together was a needed thing I do think the timing was probably wrong they could have waited another year or two or honestly even free. I think uh, the Better Together update is something they should have planned and been more transparent about publicly, saying what they were going to do before they did it, rather than trying to rush it out at the last minute. Uh, they should have waited till they could pour every single feature from the console edition, make Bedrock just a better version of not only Windows 10, a better version of the phone version, and a better version for the console. And I think in hindsight, of course they could have done things better. However, would you rather be in the world where console edition had been updated for five years, or would you rather be in the current world is maybe the more impersonal question, because in every debate, people can say, yeah, I want a fantasy world out of nowhere, but if we're talking about real solutions, what would be the better world? I think we're in the slightly better version of the future now. Sure, we could have had a new tutorial world for every single update, and sure, by now, the updates might be near to catching up, they might only be a few months delayed behind Java, and uh, we might even have some more mini-games and exclusives, uh, but I do think that the future of Bedrock as one unified code base, where they're not uh, continuously doing new things, uh, does have a lot of promise. We see this uh, every now and then, a glimmer of something amazing which can't really be done on Java, like the RTX thing, with the sorts of performance and frame rates and render distances you expect from Bedrock. I think when you look at DXR and uh, you see that, it's a reminder that, yeah, when there is this one version of Minecraft which hundreds of people work towards, there are lots of good things that can come from that. I think every single year we have these little, you know, because again, if you look at the five years that have happened since then, the first three were focused on making Minecraft for various consoles, first Xbox, then Nintendo, then uh, PlayStation. Then there was the pandemic, which, you know, like, you know, broke morale and the teams and all that. Uh, so now is the time going forwards where we're going to see the true might of Bedrock come into its own. Is it just going to be a slightly worse version of Java with, again, in general, Java getting more features and Bedrock uh, only getting things that exist on Java? Or is it going to come out into its own as a whole separate better version of the game, you know, one that has improved because it has come together. That is something we still do need the jury to be out on. Right now, I'd say it's leaning very strongly towards it being a positive thing to Minecraft definitely being better together, but all of the benefits always seem to be just down the line, and I hope that uh, in the near future we start to see them be in the present rather than in this uh, always uh, distant past. But maybe I'm, I'm crazy. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And that's a lazy cop-out, actually, to say like, ooh, let me know your opinions because maybe mine is wrong. No, I think that uh, objectively we are still waiting and seeing, and after five years that is disappointing. However, it's better to be waiting and seeing than to know you're wrong, and uh, overall, the Better Together update has left an impact, and that impact is just ongoing and still to be measured. So I guess I'll see you in five more years to be sure about this. Was the Better Together update worthwhile? We'll find out in 2027. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed because I'll see you in four to five years. Or you can just watch my live stream that's going to be later today. You know what? That, that might be a better idea. I'll see you in the live stream later. Bye.